Well, God is so amazing. I don't know about you, but I get blown away by the incredible timing and preciseness of the Holy Spirit. Oh, to, to live in sync with the Holy Spirit is just so wonderful because we just realize how much we're not in charge. Aren't you glad you're not in charge? We got good news for you. You're not in charge. Amen. You're not in charge. The Holy Ghost is in charge. Amen. As long as we want him. The only thing that can cause a disruption in that is when we're not willing to be obedient, when we're, when we're trying to hide something. Anybody trying to hide something? Just get it out of the way. Put it under the blood. Say, I hate it as much as you do, Jesus. Amen. That's all we have to do. Come in agreement with God. That's what true repentance is. And, and don't we? We hate those yokes. Yes. We hate them. I can't even say ever where I just go, oh, this is so wonderful. Once you're hooked to anything, it's like you hate it. So that's okay. You just come in agreement with the Holy Spirit and say, I hate it as much as you do. Amen. Come in agreement with the Lord. If you hate death, good. If you hate sickness, if you hate being robbed, if you hate you don't want your kids to be drowned, amen. Isn't God amazing? I mean, it could have been that scripture, but it could have been many other scriptures. Because the devil flees with the word. Because the word made flesh dwelt among us. And he's in us. He's living. He's powerful. But we need to walk so close to him because he's real. He's a real enemy. And he's like a lion sniffing around, seeing if there's an open door, seeing if there's just a little crack. I grew up with uh, German shepherds. Not lion, but a German shepherd. And uh, they used to stick. It was amazing how they could, their nose was so squishy. They could stick their nose under the door. You'd, you'd look under the crack of the door and you'd see nose. And he was sniffing, and I'm sure he could sniff out a whole lot of things in the house. And that's what the enemy's about. He's sniffing around and seeing if there's any crack. What's going on in your life? Amen. Well, the enemy's been doing some robbing and some killing and some destroying in this land of Canada. But we have faith and we have hope. Amen. And God led me by his spirit to uh, Psalm 89. Uh, we are going to see it posted up there, but you also can turn to it. Psalm 89, because we're doing the names of God. And we just happen to be on M right now. Mighty God. How many of you know mighty God? Amen. Mighty God. Your God is mighty to save. His name is mighty. His name shall be called Almighty God. Everlasting Father, precious Prince of Peace. But we need to see his might in this land of Canada again. We need to see his hand of might. That he said, my arm is not too short to save. My arm is mighty to save. And uh, so our opening um, verse this morning, Psalm 89, is found in verse 8. Who is like you, O God, almighty? You, Lord, are mighty, and your faithfulness surrounds you. God is a mighty God. And the word, every time it talks about the might of God, his arm is mighty to save. Mighty to save. And that's not just salvation. But my hope this morning for Canada is that God's arm is mighty to save. No matter what our situation. And this psalm, it starts out with the whole good news, um, which will be going step by step. But the situation is very dire for David and his whole uh, dynasty, his whole kingdom. Uh, the covenant that he had with God looks very dire, looks horrible. In the last few verses, um, it talks about you've rejected, uh, you've been angry with us, you've renounced the covenant of your servant, you defiled his crown in the dust, and you've broken through his walls. And we know God didn't do this, but it looks like God, God's arm is too short. It looks like God has failed David. It looks like all his glory, his crown is in the dust. His glory of his kingdom is shattered and things could not look any worse. So it doesn't matter where you are today. If you feel like you've been robbed, something's been killed, something's been destroyed, something valuable has been stolen... This is a good promise for you. 
And so we can all find ourselves in, the, in, a, in a place where it looks like, it seems like God has forsaken us. It seems like he's rejected his covenant. It doesn't look like he's coming through on his promises. Anybody ever been there or anybody there today? And you're going, God, why, oh, why, oh, why? And David asks these questions. Why? Why, God? If you're such a mighty God, why is this happening to me? Why has this happened? How could you let this happen? And so he doesn't start that way, though. And David has learned some things. He learned how to encourage himself in the Lord in the face of utter defeat. When everything's been stripped away and you feel raw and you feel like you just can't even bring your thoughts together anymore. And if anybody's ever been there before where you just go, you're, you're beyond speaking. I'm an expressive. So a lot of times I, I, I get, things get sorted out as I talk to my friends or I talk to my husband. But there's been a few times where honestly I couldn't form a thought. And if you've ever been there where you just can't even form a thought, you just, you just don't know anything anymore. And so David was in this place, and maybe you've been in this place, but sometime in your life if you've never been in this place, if you live long enough on this planet, but we're not going to let the devil have the last word. We heard this powerful testimony this morning. We're not going to let the enemy have the last word. So what does David do? What do you do? What do I do? Where does the church go? If we've lost touch with the Almighty and with our covenant and with everything else that we thought we were standing on, this foundation of love, where do we go? What do we do? And in Psalm 89, David starts with praise. We sang about that, a praise this morning. And he says, I will sing of the Lord's great love forever. I'm going to sing. When I don't have a word to sing, turn on your music. When you don't know what else to do, just say, I will. I will praise the Lord. I will bless the Lord. His praise will be continually on my mouth. If the devil can't keep, if he can keep you from praise, he's robbing you of being in touch with the almighty arm of God. But just to say every day, today I will praise the Lord. I will bless you, Lord. Let everything within me bless his holy name. Because God, if I, if I can still praise you, I can still praise you, God. I, I'm staying in touch with you. I'm plugging into your power here. I need a little bit of this might and this little power generated. So how do I generate this? How do I get in touch with the mighty power of God once again? And I will. I'll praise him. I will praise him forever. And Job says the same. I don't care what happens. I'm going to praise him. I'm going to praise him. I will praise the Lord. We need to get to that place to say, I'll praise the Lord. I'm going to praise you, God. I don't understand, but I'm going to praise you. I'm going to fix my eyes on you, and I worship you because I know you're a mighty God, and you're still in control, and you're still sovereign, you, and you love me, and I will make, with my mouth, I'll make your faithfulness known. Even though it looks like you're not being faithful, even though it looks like you failed, I know you are faithful. Nothing's going to change that. Amen. And I'm not going to let the enemy rob me of that might. I'm going to say, I'm going to tell of your faithfulness forever. You are faithful. That's who you are, God. With my mouth, I'll make known your faithfulness through all generations. Second powerful way, he comes in touch with the mighty hand of God. The mighty hand of God. He says, I will declare. I will declare, I will pronounce, I will declare. Point number two, point number two is I will proclaim, I will declare, I will say that your love stands firm forever. You've established your faithfulness in heaven itself. So we praise the Lord and then we proclaim, we declare, we say. We say, what do we say? We say, your love stands forever. Nothing's going to separate me from the love of God. Amen. 
Nothing in heaven, nothing on earth, nothing's going to separate you. Nothing can separate me from the love of God which I have in Christ Jesus. This I know, this I know. If I don't know anything else, God loves me. Jesus loves me. This I know. Amen. The one who saved me loves me. He can't change. He's not, he's not shaken in, in his love towards me. And so now he's got a hand on both things. He's hanging on to the might of God. He's hanging on to the, to the horns of the altar, so to speak. He's running to the Lord for refuge. And he says, I will praise him and I will proclaim. I will proclaim his faithfulness and his love for me is not going to be shaken. Can't take that away from me, devil. Amen. I'll praise him because he saved me. I praise him because his love just, nothing can separate me from that love of God. So I will proclaim that. And then he, he does something. He reminds himself and he declares the promise is past. He proclaims what God has said in his word. There's nothing more powerful than to declare back to God. Once you've come into his presence with praise, you've entered, coming into his courts with praise and with thankfulness in your heart. And thank you, Lord God, if I know nothing else, I know that you love me. And I will declare that. And I'm hanging on to that no matter what. Then he says, now, you've said... What did he say in his word? It's so powerful to say, you said, God, like that testimony. You said, if I would bring in the full tithe into the storehouses of heaven, you said you would rebuke the devourer. Amen. You said, God, and David does the same thing, or this, this masculine of this, it was Dave, the Davidic kingdom, if you look into your notes. Um, but he said, you said, I've made a covenant with my chosen one. I've sworn to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever and make your throne firm through all generations. What is that word you're hanging on to? God, you said in your word. You said in your word. If it's sickness you're facing today, you said in your word, you took up all my sicknesses and carried my diseases in your body on the cross. Amen. First of all, I'll praise you because you're worthy. I will proclaim and I will declare that your love is forever and nothing's going to separate me forever, for all of eternity. This is a done deal. You love me. Now, God, but you said in your word, if I would do this, you would do this. If that word stored up in my heart, Lord God, if I've got that word in my heart and in my mouth and I shall declare it and I shall decree anything, if your word lives in me and your word abides in me, then I would ask whatever I wish and it shall be done for me. I pray this all the time. Amen. I abide in your word, Father. And your word abides in me. And you said if your word abides in me, I would ask whatever I wish. So in Jesus' name, I'm asking you, Lord. Amen. Amen. But there's so many covenant promises. How many? We could go on and on. But we, we got to bring ourselves to that place. It's not God who needs a reminding. Like he forgot his word. But we forget, or we get rusty, or we get, it, it's, it's, it's not a good, it's not smooth, it's not working the way it's supposed to work. Amen. You will see, though, that even Jesus, to rebuke the devil, he said to Satan, it is written. And the devil had to loose some. The devil has to loose. When you say it is written, God will stand with his word. This is his testament. This is his testament. It's like a will and testament. It's legal. And the devil is a legalist. And if he can say to you, I'm sorry, you're mistaken. That's not the case for you. You just go, oh yeah, God said. And that's what David does. He comes boldly. He praises him. He knows what he's doing. He's a worshiper. He knows what he's doing. He knows the enemy's starting to lose power when he praises him. There's a reason David learned to send the praisers and the worshipers behead at the first and the front of the army. Because praising him releases the power of God, the might of God. You want to see the hand of the Almighty evident in your life? Well, David seems to have lost it, obviously, from the end of this psalm. 
but he's going, okay, I'm, I, know, I know my way back. I know my way back. I, I got I to gotta start where, where I started when I was just a young shepherd boy. Uh, I got to praise him. I got to get into his presence because he dwells in the praises of his people. So I got to praise him. I got to get into that sweet place with the Lord. I got to praise him because till, till I feel his presence, till I see his favor. Okay, now I'm starting to feel the love of God. And now I'm starting to feel faith on the inside of me. And I will declare, I will declare, and I'm going to say, God, you said in your word. This is what you said, and you're not a liar. And you got to stand and stand. And when you've done all the stand, you stand. And you, there's times I go, read my lips, devil. I'm not giving up. This is the word. I got the word of God on it. Amen. Amen. So he gets there. He gets it. And he starts declaring it. He starts saying the, the promises and the times past. Know your word. Know your word. Because if you don't know the word on these different things, the enemy's got legal right to take it from you. Because if you don't know, you don't know. If you don't know that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, and if it's not settled, he's going to come around and bring condemnation back on you. Plain and simple. But if you know that you know that you know, then that's the end of the story. Hallelujah. So he starts to establish himself in that. And he says, this is what you said, God. So whatever it is you're facing, get a few scriptures under your belt. Get a few scriptures under your belt. Hallelujah. Okay, what does David do next? He, he, could I have point four, please? Now he ponders the power in the heavens. How many of you know that you are seated, you might be seated here in a chair, Dorchester Christian Family Center, in your physical being, you might feel your chair and it's very real. You look around, you're going, yep, I'm here. But the word of God says, you're seated with him in heavenly places. Far above all power and all authority. So David gets to the place where he's going, okay, I'm in the sweet spot. I've been praising God. His love's been downloaded on me. I know what his word says, and I got myself strapped in. I've got that strap. Just like a mountain climber, he straps himself in, or a guy who's roofing, he puts his belt on. He's, he's strapped to that thing. He's going nowhere. He, he's not going to fall. He's got that word like that belt of truth buckled around his waist. Now he's just settled on who he is and now he's going, okay. Even though things look terrible here on the earth, right here, right now, there is a place where I'm seated. Amen. There is a place. I'm seated with Christ. Far above. So what does he say? He says, the heavens praise your wonders, Lord. Your faithfulness too in the assembly of the holy ones. That's the angels. Right now, where Jesus is, see him. When you're coming to the throne of grace to get something from God, you got to go there. Did you know there's a very real place to enter through the blood of the Lamb, to enter his gates with praise? And then you are seated with him in heavenly places. So it's okay in your spirit, man, to get yourself there. I do this all the time, and I'm going, okay, Father, you're on the throne. Jesus is at the right hand. I'm seated with Christ. I get down, and I get on my knees, and I come before him and bring my petitions to him with thanksgiving. I let all my requests be known to him until that peace starts coming back in my life. Until the devil, until... There's nothing missing and there's nothing broken. We got this settled. I got the word of God on it. And now I'm bringing my petitions to God with thanksgiving. And that's a place of receiving. And now he's going there. David knows how to go there in the spirit. He is going. He's seeing himself. There's the Father. There's the Lord Jesus. Surrounded by the Holy Ones. Surrounded by the angels who cry out. What do we sing this morning? Holy, holy, holy. Were you a little bit transported? Can you sing that without going there? Amen? Can you sing this? So it says, who in the skies can compare with the Lord? Like, I mean, is there any other power up there? 
Look at, we're surrounded by the angels, the holy ones. And if you got a picture of one, if you have never seen in the spirit, and you've never seen one, you don't know how big those bruisers are. <laughs> big, big angels. But who can compare to the Lord Almighty? Who can compare, who has final authority, who's gone through all the legal channels to get himself seated at the Father's right hand where he ever lives to make intercession for you? Can he pray for Steve Jones without stopping? Yep, all the time, all day, every day, all night while he's sleeping, every single one of you. He's in ever living to make intercession for you according to the will of the Father. That's that's where he is. Amen. But if you don't know that and you don't see that and all you see is circumstances around you and what has happened to you and how the devil's been about robbing, killing, and destroying, you're not going to be in the position to see the almighty hand of God. You want to see the mighty hand of God again on your life. Amen. So we got to get ourselves there. And he goes there. In the council of the holy ones, God is greatly feared. That means the angels of the Lord. God is greatly feared. All they can say... All they can say is holy, 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 is Lord God Almighty. That's all that can come out of their mouths. He is greatly to be feared, and he's more awesome than all those who surround him. More awesome than a thousand, ten thousands of angels. Who it can compare? Who is like you, Lord God Almighty. You, Lord, are mighty and your faithfulness surround you. Now he's, he's getting a picture of where true might and power are found. He has gone through the gates of praise. He has gone through the gates of proclaiming God's love. Nothing shall separate him from the love of God. He has gone through the gates of reminding God what he says. And now he finds himself at the very throne, in the heavenly places. And the things of earth grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Turn your eyes on Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth, these momentary afflictions, these things that call our name, these things that make us worry, nothing can separate you. Amen. There's nothing the devil took from you that God cannot restore. He can give you, even if it looks like he got away with murder, he can show you the other side. He's able to work this together for your good. He's able to cause you to rise up and go higher the next time to say, it'll not happen again. I've learned a few things. Amen? Amen. So there he is. Now that he's got that picture, he goes back and he's on the earth again. I really... Um, I've only had a few experiences uh, in the spirit, uh, being taken in the spirit, but I've been to places in heaven, which is so amazing. The time we had a traumatic experience in India, I was so traumatized that with nightmares that the Lord gave me a vision of running up the stairs into his very arms. And then instantly I was back on the earth because I turned around and I saw multitudes that were poor and destitute and blind and they looked like beggars and I said just a minute Lord I ran down the steps I'll be back in a minute because life here is just it's a minute in the meantime we got a job to do amen so he turns we can't stay up there forever yet but if you got anybody up there in heaven rest assured Jesus is taking good care of them amen and just make sure you've learned a few things and that's why we teach the word of God this word is sufficient Efficient. It's going to teach you and train you into right living, right talking, right praying. Amen. It's sufficient. It's more than enough to get you there, to win this battle, to say, read my lips, I'm not losing this fight. If God could do that for them, he can do it for me. Yes. Amen. And come to this place and say, God, I want to go there. 
And now David turns his eyes to the earth. Next, he ponders the power on the earth. He goes, okay, let's take a look at a little bit of history and a little bit of geography here. And he recounts over history all the things, the mighty hand of God at work on the earth. Evidence. He's looking for evidence. And he's telling the Lord the evidence that he has seen on the earth. And he says in verse 9, you rule over the surging sea. When its waves mount up, you still them. Even before, he wasn't on the earth when Jesus stilled the seas. But how did David know this? Well, he knows he's gotten into the secret place. See, he's been into the heavenlies. Now he knows those waves look really big when you're on a little ship. <laughs> but from heavenly perspective, you rule over the surging seas. Jesus commanded them, peace be still. The things that scare you on the earth after you've been there, it doesn't scare you so much anymore. You founded the world and all that's in it. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. God, this is your world. No matter what you see going on in Canada or the rallies they have on the weekends or whatever, you go, honestly, have we really fallen that far in, in a few short generations? What is happening on the earth? Scary until we turn our eyes on Jesus and say, God, this is not too hard for you. Amen. Amen. You rule over the seas. You crushed Rahab like one slain. Your strong arms scattered your enemies. The heavens are yours and also the earth. On the earth as it is in heaven. Now I got faith, he's saying. I'm coming to a place where I can declare, let your kingdom come on the earth as it is in heaven. Amen. God wants you to see yourself as being able to make declarations on the earth. After you've been in the secret place, he's saying, I've given you all authority. I've, I've got all authority. I stripped the enemy, and now all authority has been given to me. And he says, go ye therefore, I give you my authority. What? Authority on the earth. The reason we've seen Canada get to the place where it is unfortunately, is because the church has been quiet for way too long. We haven't had a voice. You'll notice Donald Trump has got a big, loud voice, like a big trumpet. And he's saying, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. And now he's declared on his last night's speech, he's declared freedom for pastors to speak whatever's on their heart. And he says, you will not lose your freedom to preach the word of God, because it was getting to such a place. And now we got to pray for Canada. Say, if you could do it in the U.S., raise up a leader, someone who's got backbone, someone who's going to refute the powers of the enemy. God, I've seen it, David said. I've seen it on the earth. I've seen you crush your enemies before. And he brings himself back to the place of faith when he was a young man, when the covenant was working like a well-oiled machine. But this guy got his eyes off of Jesus, had, land up having an affair, land up murdering somebody, and he got his eyes off and he's forgotten who God had created him to be. But he says, but I've seen it. So I'm bringing myself back and I believe, oh God, that your arm's still not too short. We have hope. I have hope in this next generation. It's so awesome. It's so awesome because um, this one guy last night on the speech when he was uh, doing kind of summarizing, I thought, oh my goodness, he is so speaking prophetically. Because there's coming a time, people, where I am so excited to hand my torch over. That doesn't mean I'm, I'm giving up on the race. That doesn't mean we're giving up in the race. And I don't know, I've got a ways to go. I still got strength, like Joshua said and Caleb said. I'm 89, I haven't, I haven't got any strength gone. I still got strength, so uh, I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask for the mountain that you promised me. So I'm still believing God to conquer mountains. But you know what? I am speaking to this next generation say don't let what we let happen to Canada how do you take Canada how do you take a country back David is saying do this even if you're in a bad place now get into the presence of God through worship and praise Get it established. Get your heart so full of the power of the love of God that you've got such a grasp on it that the devil can't shake that out of you. Amen. 
that say nothing can separate me from the love of God. I'm in the love of God. And I still have his covenant and it's still in effect, devil. And just because I messed up doesn't mean that God's faithfulness has changed. Amen. So he's getting himself to the place and then he's getting to the secret place and he's bringing his covenant before the Lord and he's, and he's presenting it in that heavenly place and then he turns his eyes on earth and he starts declaring, oh yeah, I've seen you wipe Ray about. I've seen you wipe out, out other cities. I've seen what you can do on the earth, oh God. What I need here is for you to stretch forth your arm once again across Canada and that word that you have promised before the foundations of the world. This land was founded on a promise given by the Spirit of God that he, say it with me, shall have dominion over sea to shining sea. Amen. He shall have dominion. Now you got to say it with a place of authority and watch what's happening in the spirit. Whether you can see it in the spirit or not, you just got to know that it's happening. Stand to your feet and we're going to declare it. And, and like you're talking to somebody because guess what? You are. Guess what? You are. You got to see that when the word of God comes out of your mouth, demons are fleeing. What does the word say? One of us can put how many? A thousand to flight. If you really believed that, you'd be doing that every day. What can two do? Okay, three. 100,000. I'm not very good at math, but se seven, I think, is about a million. Well, we got seven, 14, 18, 21. Okay, do that all to the power of 10. Glory to God, all any mathematicians here. So we say, let God arise and enemies be scattered. And then we're going to say, he shall have dominion over sea. Okay? Sure, one, one instruction at a time. Let God arise and enemies be scattered. He shall have dominion from sea to shining sea. In Jesus' name. Amen. Woo! We worship you. We praise you, Almighty. Good God. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Well, there's a whole lot more, but that's as far as we're going to get today. Hallelujah. Praise God. Read the rest of that one and chew it up for yourself in sections and ask God if he's not saying something. Amen. Can we sing that song, Who is like the Lord Almighty? Since that's the verse. Who is like the Lord Almighty? Hallelujah. None. We got to start speaking to this next generation to say you are a, you are a, you are a, what are you? You're a conqueror, amen? He's more than a conqueror. Amen. Start declaring. He's raising you up in Jesus' name. He's raising you up. He's going to be faithful, amen? But even if you're the quiet type, even if you're the quiet type, <laughs> you can say even in a whisper, in Jesus' mighty name, I declare my needs are met according to his riches and glory. I declare I'm blessed in Jesus' name. I declare I'm the head and not the tail. I declare we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. I'm going to put on my armor and fight the best I can fight in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, Braden, look at that big, tall hunk over there. Amen. In the name of Jesus, God needs young men and young women to rise up in Jesus' name and know who they are in Christ. Hallelujah. doesn't matter if you're old like this. The devil is so scared of you because if you got a roar on the inside of you, amen. You still can take it. Amen. Are you going to let the devil rob you? No. No. I bring in my tithe. Amen. I bring in my tithe. Amen. That tithe is speaking. So devil, I don't know if you read the word lately, but I take the word against you. I use that sword. What, is, what does somebody do with a sword? Use it. Well, isn't just tickle the enemy with it? Doesn't just come along tickling you with it. 
Let them have her. Amen. Let her have it. Amen. How many warriors we got in the house? Let's. Amen. Let's go. Let's go in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Praise you, God. Mm -hmm.